with it. It's never ever your fault. The reason why people do these things is because they have severe, um, you know, issues going on in their lives. They've got mental issues, and chances are they would have done that anyway. Um, it is not your fault. There's not a single good reason why we should know about this. I'm so excited. Let me tell you the whole story. Hallelujah! BreadTube finally graced us with some quality fucking content. Yes, I've been waiting for this. So be aware, we might attract some BreadTubers in the audience. So please remember to be respectful and do not send any hate or harassment or bullying to anybody mentioned in this video. In my previous video, we saw a love story that was so unlikely and wholesome and anybody could have rooted for it except, of course, our friend Def Noodles. However, just to avoid giving you the impression that I'm somehow an optimistic person, that I'm positive and that I look on the bright side of things, we're gonna discuss an epic breakup in the bread tube sphere today. And this breakup happened between Xander Hall, or Alex as he's sometimes known, 22 year old bread tuber, and ex-girlfriend Lani, 32 years old, also active in the bread sphere. Now this is important because when these multicolored hair people have a divorce publicly or a breakup, the audience tends to get dragged in and we find out an excessive amount of disgusting facts about people we never care to know. And this story is no different. If you're in the political sphere, then chances are you've already had some prior biases to these people. Heck, even me, I've made videos on Tender all before. But we should suspend any further judgment, because this story is fucking amazing. It's hilarious. There's a bunch of surprise chat moves and possible future documents and videos coming out on this. So without further ado, on the 10th of July 2022, Lani slash Pasta Leftist slash Xander Hall's ex dropped this twit longer on our timelines, and we did not see any of this coming. And it reads as follows. A few weeks ago, Alex, Xander Hall TV, ended our two and a half year relationship by dumping me with a text message while I was at work. He accused me of cheating on him, of being a drug addict and stealing from him. For the record, no, I did not cheat on him. I've used drugs recreationally many times in my life, a fact I've never hid from him, but the only things I'm addicted to are cigarettes. And I wasn't stealing from him either. A couple months back, my car was broken into while I was at work and my laptop was stolen along with my purse that was in my trunk. I did 100% of the grocery shopping and household errands for us, so Alex's debit card was in my purse. Alex now believes I made up everything about the break-in and that I was sold it for drugs or something. I do not know where he got this idea because we won't have a real conversation with me about any of this. When I tried, he dismissed anything I tried to say by calling me a master manipulator, effectively shutting down any kind of dialogue. Then he demanded that I come home from work, I pack up my cat Luna, everything I own into my two-door Ford Focus and move out instantaneously. When I explained to him there was no way I could just move out that quickly, he threatened to re my car unless I came and got her right then. I wasn't going to drag my 13-year-old cat around the desert in the summer heat in my car while I tried to figure out what I was going to do, so I told her she was staying there for the be time being, but that I would try to stay away as much as possible. For the next couple of weeks, I couch surfed and slept in my car, only stopping at the house to see Luna change clothes. At some point while I was gone, Alex packed up his computer, moved back into his mom's house, and when he did, he took Luna with him. On his way out, he also decided to completely trash our bedroom, which more or less meant he trashed my room. I didn't hear from him at all except when he would text me to complain about how awful his mom's house is and how he wouldn't let him go anywhere and how he is miserable because she wouldn't get him any vapes or weed cartridges. Every time I ask about my cat, he would just say he had to take her because the AC wasn't working and it isn't like I kidnapped her. The AC was only broken for a single night. I started sleeping at home again, but didn't see Alex at all. The first couple of days I spent trying to clean my room. He'd made it nearly impossible to even walk through. 
When I would try to contact him, it usually went unanswered. I frequently asked him to bring Luna home, but was ignored. Probably around a week and a half ago, he suddenly reappeared without Luna to pick up some more of his stuff and tell me he was turning into the keys to the apartment the next day, so I'd better be moved out by then. I don't make very much money. Rental prices are unbelievably high. Getting my own place right now is going to be extremely difficult. His mom started texting me demanding I put all my stuff in a storage unit and presumably start living out of my car full time. She told me I should just move to Big Bear despite me not being able to afford rent there either. Not having a car that could safely drive there in winter and not having a job up there. I told them I would move out as soon as I could but that it wasn't going to be possible tomorrow. I had a show up in Idleworld on Saturday, but I had found a couple of people to help me get a storage unit and start moving some of my non-essential belongings into it when I got back into town. One of the friends who agreed to help me wanted to see my show and also needed a ride to someplace this last weekend to see his girlfriend so we rode up to my show together our plan was to go straight there after my show he'd spend sunday with his girlfriend and then he would head back to palm springs after dropping his girlfriend back off at home we were parked in a parking space and about to start the drive home when a cop pulled up behind us blocking us into the space the tags on my car are expired because i haven't been able to afford to pay them yet so i think that is why this stopped in the first place the friend with me is currently on probation, meaning any vehicle he is in can be searched without warrant at a cop's discretion. They decided to search my car and found some drugs that my friend had with them. They arrested him and initially were planning to let me go since they were found in his belongings and he took responsibility for them. Then, after putting him in the car, I heard one of them mention to the other that since it was all in my car, they could book me too if they wanted, so they might as well. So that's how I ended up spending five very long, very cold days in a holding cell. It was incredibly shitty, so much so that it managed to make all the stressful problems waiting for me at the end of the tunnel seem not so bad after all. When they finally released me, I was still in the same clothes I was wearing five days earlier. I had my a little less than $200 cash and literally nothing else. The police left everything else I had in my car when they impounded it. Luckily, I was able to get a hold of another friend who was willing to drive all the way to Banning to pick me up. I tried calling both Alex and his mom, but neither of them answered. Alex had also blocked me on every social media platform. I have no idea whether or not he even knows that I was in jail, but I don't assume he would care at all if he did. Friday afternoon, my friend pulled up into my complex to drop me off. I was so excited to take a shower and put on a clean change of clothes until I discovered that Alex and his mother had changed the lock and turned the keys into our property manager while I was stuck in jail, with every single thing I own still inside. I do not have a single article of clothing other than the tank top and pants I was wearing five days ago, or a toothbrush, or a hairbrush, or blah 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 necessities. Not only that, but I have no idea if and how or when I'll get anything back. My mother's ashes are in there. Every single thing I have to remember my father with. Oh, the family. Oh, no. And the kitten. Oh, dear God. Bless their soul. I've tried to contact him and his mother every possible way I could think of since I was released from jail. I even messaged his editor but was ignored by them as well. I spent the cash I had to pay for two nights at the cheapest motel I could find so that I could at least be inside while trying to figure out what to do from there. I have to check out in the morning and I haven't come up with any more solutions than, than checking in. Yeah, I spent $20 on a phone charger. Jail food isn't vegetarian, so I had hardly eaten all week. <laughs> to be clear, I'm not saying all or even most of this is Alex's fault. He isn't required to help me, but it feels like he's trying to make the whole I am impossible to dig myself out of. I'll admit that since I started working outside the house, I haven't been as good of a girlfriend to Alex as I've been the past two years prior. During two years of COVID, I was home all the time, constantly available and on call to help with anything he needed. I was mostly happy, Alex, blah, 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 but 
I don't feel like I deserve to have my cat and everything taken from me. So if you've wondered where I've been or um, none of you are under any obligation to help, here's the cash app. Yeah. And holy shit, Alex, call me, please. You have my cat and I know you aren't this cruel. Oh dear god, that was so incredibly boring, way too excessive, not enough comedy. Okay, here's the TLDR of that situation. <laughs> her claim is that when they broke up about a month ago, Xander told her they gotta move, she's gotta get out, regardless of the fact that she's cheap and she's broke, she's, she's gotta move, and um, meanwhile he's keeping her shit hostage, including her mother's ashes and the 13-year-old cat. And he decided to move back in with his own mother while she is stuck at the apartment alone without money, without an income of any kind, a broken car, no cat, and then he changed the locks as well. Somehow she also managed to get her ass arrested even though it was entirely her friend's fault, her, fr her friend took responsibility for the whole thing, but she unfortunately also got arrested for about five days, slept in the same clothing, couldn't eat because she's a vegetarian. So just so you know, no matter how deep her spurts dropped, never did her principles because mm, she's got that bread to fire in her. And when she and her vegetarian ass finally got out, she only had enough money for a motel and 20 bucks left, which she used on a phone charger, presumably to type out this shitty ass twit longer we just had to experience. Now that's her side. Now, there's many different ways that Xander Hall could respond to this. Be initially, I assume, pretty shocked when somebody you trusted would just publicly display all your information like that. I mean, she did say she had a tough time reaching out to him as he had blocked her everywhere. And so, you know, maybe it was her only way in which she could get into contact with him. And of course, let's not forget the list of accusations that she wants to defend. And that is that she stole money for drug abuse, that she is a drug addict, and that she's been committing identity theft. All these things are stuff that she absolutely denies and says is not the case and Xander Hall meanwhile what is he gonna do what is he gonna go private has he been exposed has he been destroyed is Brett Tube gonna cancel him because this is just no way to treat a lady what happened well Xander Hall said fuck hold my beer let me just go nuclear real quick and drop her full ass prison rap sheet drop it <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> he just he posted this tweet with a caption, You stole my money and spent it on a secret meth edition. <laughs> and you just got out of jail. We broke up over a month ago. This is a sad attempt to extort me. More info coming soon. And then he <laughs> posted her full ass booking details, all of her charges, everything. I censored out a bunch of doxable information. Now, Xander Hall claims that this is not doxing because this information is publicly available on google.com. If you do any kind of research, these are just prison records. They're publicly available. None of this is identifiable. None of this gives any current location, anything like that. So there is a debate to be had there. He added a follow-up tweet saying, She's mad I moved out of the apartment after our breakup and wouldn't provide her housing and bail her out of jail after she and her boyfriend got arrested for ID theft and myth possession. She's been threatening to go to Twitter about it for a couple of days now because I'm ignoring her messages, but like, I'm not paying my lying myth addict ex-girlfriend's bail for her rent, laughing my ass off. So basically, Xander did not take this kneeling down. He did not try to take this private. He was not trying to de-escalate the situation. He was saying, fuck you, you lying bitch. You cheated on me. You committed identity theft and you are a meth addict. All of that in three fucking tweets with receipts, with receipts of her being actually arrested for these claims and charges. Not, not the identity theft one, but for the possession of drugs. And so, of course, in her tweet longer, she did claim it was her friend's drugs, not her drugs. So, so we don't know. We don't know. But, but, where this shit gets even fucking more wild is the fact that these two public figures not only decided to splash their info out for everybody to read and also to absolutely destroy the other one in the process, but they're also a part of a highly sophisticated fucking bread tube political left sphere of the internet, which means 
people have to absolutely hold them accountable for the ideas that these young people, these young unqualified people have spewed on the internet. So yes, the criticisms and the memes were fucking fantastic. Now, the first major criticism that Xander Hall received was that he did poster docs in those police records. However, he claims from his side these are already publicly available information that absolutely anybody can look up with the information that she herself has provided online in her own free will. So make of that what you like if you consider this doxing or not. Uh, for him, this man dropped fucking receipts and um, people are actually on his side based on this receipts that he dropped. So that's to your own discretion whether you think it's too far. But it did get mass reported and is now officially deleted off of Twitter for privacy reasons. So um, Twitter does think this violated a policy or it was a mass flagging from their side. The second criticism is that he is holding the cat hostage, that he stole this cat. Now he did respond later to it in his live stream with Chad Lodic, and I will get to it, but from his perspective, his argument, he did not steal the cat, again, for you to choose. At this point, what we do know based on what she herself has claimed is that she doesn't have any place to live and she doesn't have money. So I'm struggling to see how it's a good idea for her to have any pets whatsoever. This is what I'm saying on that one. And then one of my favorite fucking criticisms is that he doesn't support drug addicts. He's not dealing well with the mental health of his ex-girlfriend and the social needs that she might have, you know, because he's bread tube. So he has to give a fuck. And she herself absolutely played into this. And she tweeted this, left Twitter. We need criminal justice reform. Someone's life shouldn't be ruined just because they were arrested. A-C-A-B. Also left Twitter. Cops would never arrest an innocent person. Guilty! All right, okay, cool. <laughs> so pretty obviously, the different roles that they're taking in the breakup here is that Xander is going to be the alpha Chad putting his foot down saying, no more, you crazy bitch. And she's gonna be the victim myth addict who actually believes her political ideals. Throwback to uh, when she couldn't eat fucking prison food because she's a vegetarian. <laughs> Oh, it could never be me. <laughs> I hope the myth falls her up well. <laughs> and then, finally, the final criticism that I saw was that Xander Hall decided to make this private business public, which you should never do because, you know, it's drug shaming, there's poor person shaming, there's animal abuse allegations, which he debunked, thrown at her, and it's just all so disgusting, how dare he? Well, mofos, she's the one that made it public. Not only are they public figures, but she actually posted the twit longer publicly. So, the fucks that I give towards her in this current predicament, the predicament being that it's online and publicly available information, that that's on her. Like, I, also on him, if it ends up that he is the bad guy and we should all hate him, it's just as much his fault. But right now, verifiably, with actual timestamp receipts, she's the one that made the first move publishing their breakup online. So that one is an absolute no dealer. And then of course, the allegations at this point in time against Alani without any evidence. Now Xander Hall did say he's gonna make a video on it. So uh, let's just keep up with the, the news as it goes. But the criticisms against her, or the claims against her, is that she is a myth addict, that she cheated on Xander Hall, which is the reason why they broke up, that she actively stole his money and credit card and committed identity theft, and that he only defended himself because she went public. So instead of immediately going live and responding to all the allegations with receipts and very little sleep and anxiety, Xander Hall decided to uh, take a moment and rather record this privately with all the receipts, but also at the same time went on a stream, a 15 hour stream, I will link it, but I will absolutely not play it for you. <laughs> In this stream, he, uh, let's call it reframes a lot of the claims that she had made. First off, he says that what actually happened with regards to the flat situation is that the apartment was in his name, him being Xander Hall, and a month before she got arrested, he wanted her to move out because, you know, they, they broke up. He found out that she had cheated on him and that she was a myth addict, and um, her response was to just change the locks of the apartment 
Um, he thought this was quite funny because they were going to evict her anyway since the contract had ended. So he just decided to take the cat and his shit and move in with his mother and just kind of watch this play out. He also said in this stream that the reason why he's sure that she does meth is because one time he got home after like a week or something and the whole apartment was trashed, it was dirty, there was still all shit everywhere, it was just disgusting. And then he found this little crafty table in which he saw attempts at making fake IDs, they were very obviously fake, uh, so impersonating, you know, identity theft and such. And then he also discovered what looked like a little homebrew concoction for meth in his living room. He did not, I repeat, not call it a meth lab. But something similar to that, some breaking badass shit was happening in his fucking living room next to the arts and craft dealership of fake identities. So when Homeslice got arrested for drug possession, Xander Hall just just intuitively knows that this means her drugs and she got caught together with her fucking boyfriend not some friend of some friend of some friend oh no the guy and her both on meth charges that's his position I, you can you can believe it you cannot but holy shit is this some jerry springer shit what the fuck now look, a lot of you might immediately question him and say, why did you not contact the police when you found a not meth lab in your fucking living room? And he has a quick, easy response for that. He basically didn't know if or how he himself would be implicated in this shit show because he lives with her and um, they've been together for years now and he kind of has to explain meth to a cop and how he's not involved somehow. So from his perspective, he decided not to. And then um, he also claims without proof, so not saying it's true at all, but he also claims that she, in an attempt to get her money problem sorted, decided to commit identity theft. In other words, she decided to get a bunch of fucking credit cards in Xander Hall's name. But because she's an iconic retard, she didn't realize that he would get informed that there are credit cards on his name. So he just stopped the process. He just, like, phoned up and said, please don't, uh issue me any credit cards and um, that kind of stopped the process and he decided not to charge her initially with identity theft or anything but she did claim that she was going to drop this twit longer for apparently a while now and he said okay well if you drop it then, I then I'm going to file a police case against you that, that was the arrangement apparently so it kind of makes sense why he went that nuclear instantaneously after she dropped the twit longer he kind of knew this was coming Again, we deserve this. This is fucking great. Keep it up, guys. Seriously, keep it up, guys. This is the best content we've had since JK Rowling cancelled Bosch in the entire Bread Troop sphere. <laughs> and then finally, he said he doesn't even really like cats. He really wants to give the cat back, but the cat cannot live with a homeless person in a car. That would be animal cruelty. Not what is currently happening, but that. So he decided to uh, keep the cat and he also says he put all her shit in storage and the storage unit is there it's open it's ready the second the second she takes the key from him and decides to you know pay for the storage unit he will officially be done with her so that's he's kind of just waiting for her to um be ready to receive all her stuff because she doesn't ha she isn't ready she doesn't have money or a place that's his official stance he did say he's making a video on this hopefully his video drops about the same time that this video that you're watching right now so that i can just link the two together i'm sure it'll be a fantastic addition to it or it'll debunk everything because here's where the story gets even trickier <laughs> Kiwi Farms user is found, and I will not link this, I will not show this, I will not reference this, but it had been found by people that there was a leaked tape, one of the sexual variety between Lani and the supposed person that she had cheated on with Xander Hall. So, um, was this something that she would leak herself, or did... Xander Hall pull an Ethan Ralph and decided to go for revenge and just leak it anyway? Or was it the new meth boyfriend who leaked it because he saw an opportunity for clout and doesn't miss a single shot? I don't know who you would trust between a method and a bread tuber. I mean, it's a very difficult decision. 
But hopefully for everybody involved, this drama is more like a meth trip and we've already reached our peak and our high and now we're coming down, we're cooling, we're getting chilled, just so that everybody can keep a steady head and keep it pushing. Regardless, this is some fucking entertaining shit and if you stuck it all the way till now, I will reward you with some tasteful and not so tasteful memes. Enjoy. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way Yeah, you bet <laughs> Listen, I'm just a thought with an opinion and I don't know shit about addictions. Pile. I mean, what did you expect? 